welcome back to Harlow's World and to another segment of Summer Scribe, our Summer Scribe series. And again, we just want to encourage you to follow and 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 check out the authors that we feature on this podcast. So today I have with me a new author. And if Shelly, if you could just kind of give us a brief introduction and your background as an author. Okay, my name is Shelly Uckman. I mainly write suspense thrillers because that's what I love to read. Um, I, the two that are out now are suspense thrillers, Past Sins and Whispering Woods. My third one that's going to be coming out is A Family Saga. Um, I'm a mother of four. I have two grandsons that I absolutely adore. I love the garden. Um, cooking is like one of my favorite things to do. And I read as much as I write. <laughs> I mean, that is I, awesome. Now, now tell me what what inspired you to start writing? Well, actually, when I wrote my very first book, I actually wrote it to save myself. It was there with some real. I was having problems with trusting people, and in order for me to get where I am today in my life and trust people and everything, I had to write that book, and awesome. therefore. It just went, you know, hey, you know what? I really enjoy and love writing. Let's just keep going with this. <laughs> now, your your first book, was that Whispering Woods? No, actually, my first book was is coming out in three months. It's called Broken Trust. And oh, wow. um, Past Sins was my second book. And then Whispering Woods is actually a novella, and it is the third. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're kind of doing it like in the reverse order. You release the newest one first, and then the oldest one last. <laughs> kind of like the... <laughs> That's exactly oh, how I did. needed more time with the broken trust one because yeah. that one was cool to me. I needed more time to work. Yeah, <laughs> I totally get that. My third book, which is um, it's 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 based on real life events, but it definitely is a part of my life story. And because it was my life story, it took so long. Now I do see we have a guest in here. Is this someone that you invited, Rose? Yes, that okay. would probably be my. <laughs> Hi, Aunt Rose. Okay. All right. Oh, hello, Rose. Thank you for joining us. All right. So now, um, now, do you have like a process when you're writing? Because I know you say you took a, it's taken a while for your third book, but do you did you have like a process? Because you seem like a busy woman. You like to cook, garden, grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I really don't have a true process. I mean, I just when I'm ready, I just sit down and I write. And I really enjoy writing. So it's like I do it every day. I at least put in an hour a day. Um, right. Because that is the quieter time in my life. <laughs> the day is just so busy. So I'm I, anywhere from hour to four to six hours a night. And wow. I just a little area set up that I just when when I know I'm not going to be interrupted, that's where I go. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, it's 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 a commitment to to just write for four to five hours straight. I I struggle with that 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 because I get busy and then after such a busy day I get tired and I go I gotta write. But you have to be mentally. Sometimes it's not even a physical thing; it's a mental thing. Like I've got to take a moment and just write, even if like you said, just an, if it's an hour a day or a certain amount of words by the yeah. end of the week. I have to get it done. So I totally understand that. Now, you you mentioned earlier that you write kind of what you like to read. And so you have your um, Whispering Woods. That is a thriller. That that Based on what I can tell, that looks like a thriller. That one is. That one is a thriller. Um, it's actually based on um, Owsley County, Kentucky. Is it, which, oh, um, oh, are you there? Yes, yes. It, oh, it okay. kind of lagged a little bit, but I can hear you. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, and it's just like a thriller and I love like the dark woods. And when I was out in the dark woods, one day this plot just came to my mind. I'm like, I'm going to go and I'm going to write it. <laughs> and that, that's how that book. That and, is awesome. How did you develop your characters? Like to make them feel authentic? Is it based on someone that you know or met or just. No. A... With Whispering Woods. With Woods, they're all made up. Um, I just kind of developed them, I, you know, I, I sat down and I, usually when I am writing, I will sit down and I'll write my characters, who they're going to be, give them their names, and I'll write out their personalities, so I'll refer to that sheet, um, that's what I did with Whispering Woods, now Past Sins, that one was fun to write, because everybody I worked with wanted to be in the book, so everybody in that book actually is somebody I worked with, and I made really? me, you know, so my one's the bad guys, the good people, you know, vice versa, 
and everything. So that one was really fun to write. <laughs> And when you um, wrote a book based on people that you work with or that you knew, did anybody get upset or was it like, were you, was anybody like, I should have been bigger or not so big? I mean, did you have any conflict in getting that book written? No, because I had them all sign a paper, giving me permission to use their name. And also that, you know, Hey, if you don't like your character, sorry, you can't sue me, you know, but right. this is the going to put you in. So no, actually everybody kind of liked it, you know, like, Oh, I like that role. The evil before. <laughs> Well, that is awesome because I I, I would have never thought what my my book be, being based on actual people, I was still a little nervous, so I switched up the names a little bit and the the physical descriptions because I was trying to like throw people off a little bit. And some people still caught on. They were like, "Wait a minute, I think that's me? <laughs> is this me?" And I'm like, "Well, maybe." Yeah, I would take somebody's first name and put it with somebody else's last name, and you kind of it up that way. And it was really fun to write. I really had a good, great time writing that book. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Now, I know you just say you have a book coming out that's a little more personal to your experience, but do you have any particular theme or messages that you try to convey with your with your writing? Um, well, with Broke Trust, that one, yes, there is more of a message to it. I want people to know that it is okay to go through these life events and you'll still be able to survive. And that even though we've been through these devastating things in our life, you know, we can still become a better person out of it. So, and, and then, you know, you can still not be the victim. You can be the survivor. Absolutely. And, and dance in that book. Um, my other books, I think people kind of relate to the characters and that um, I actually had one that she, she read uh, whispering once and she told me, she goes, I am so mad. And I'm like, why? She goes, because in the beginning, I love this character. Now I, I'm just so mad at this character, you know. So as long as I'm getting people to relate to the character and yes. feel as though I'm doing my job. Absolutely. To get that, to evoke some sort of emotion about a character. That's pretty cool. Now, wh which book was that? Was that Whispering Woods? Green was, you know. Okay. Uh, you know, it was, I, I looked at both of them. I didn't get a chance to really read into them, but I love the description that you have on the, it's like a little quick description for Whispering Woods. And I was like, oh, I like that. Cause I like thrillers. I like watching thrillers, but there's something about reading it that captivates me a little bit more. Even like when, when I'm reading books, like um, I remember being a young girl reading Amityville Horror. <laughs> this is back when we could read stuff like that. And I remember reading it and thinking, Oh my God. And just kind of put, putting the visuals to it. So when I read the description of Whispering Woods, I automatically got a visual of the character. I think that's an attorney. I got kind of a visual without even reading like the, the actual book. And I thought, okay, well, that's on my list. Because I will tell you, I plan to get a book from each author that comes on my show. My That's my goal is to make sure that I myself am supporting you guys as authors and you get at least getting one of your books, if not all of them. So I'm definitely going to read Whispering Woods and hopefully we can come back and, uh, you know, have a little talk and see if we can, I can, I can pick your brain a little bit on, on my reading on the book. And Rose remembers a novella. So two books. Um, okay. Because it would be best to split it into two. Um, I'm not quite sure why, but uh, author, editor, I'm sorry, but that's what he wanted. So I'm like, okay. So I was disappointed that Whispering was only the first version of it that came out was only 112 pages. He's like, no, you don't understand. We want to do it this way because it's going to capture the attention more. And this way, and the way it, it, it it's, I hate cliffhangers in a book. <laughs> so this one's not actually a cliffhanger. You could actually be ended this way if it wanted to be. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. Well, so now you published through a a pub an actual publisher. Um, Are you self-published? Self-published. I have okay. self-published novels. And okay. um, so all my books are online through Barnes and Nobles, um, but they are in some of the other stores that I've uh, pounded the pavement to get them into. And I've gotten them into five libraries and everything else by pounding or paying, you know, getting out there and doing it. And That's I'm so getting start another tour of book signings. I just finished up a, a set of six and I'm getting ready to do three more here in the next uh well actually starting next week on the 27th of this month that is fantastic well we definitely have to make sure we share that with uh, the listeners of the podcast and your followers do you have a website or besides Barnes and Nobles where they can find the books or, where, or, or learn of your book signings or anything like that 
Uh, yes, I do. I have an author's page on Facebook. You know, it's Shelly Elfman author. And then I'm on Goodreads and I have a TikTok thing where, um, like, I try to help out other female authors too. So, in a lot of get into the libraries and that. So, I'll do little TikTok videos and I'll put up how they get into the library or how I got into Barnes and Noble store and how I got into half price bookstores and, you know, stuff like that. Well, you said that because I was going to ask you, would you mind sharing? So, I'm going to have to get your TikTok before we part today and uh, follow and share your TikToks because I would love to learn myself personally. This is also a learning experience for me. I will learn how, would love to learn how to get into libraries and things like that. So I'm excited that you do that because that is so important that, you know, we can just support each other and help each other out in this community of authors because it's a, uh, it can be challenging. Oh, so, yes, it is. So can what should... have, I'm can sorry, you share can you share some of the challenges or even the triumphs you've had as a, as an author? Um, one of the challenges, the biggest challenge for me was writing Broken Trust. And, you know, wow. every single emotion book. Um, and that one took me a while and I'd have to walk away from it a few times and then maybe, you know, a couple of days and then go back to it. Um, my biggest triumph is just getting it out on the market. It's actually yes. starting to and getting it into the library. I've yeah. actually to do more book signings from like half price books and inviting me back. Um, Barnes and Nobles. I'm this is going to be my fourth or fifth signing at Barnes and Nobles. So, um, like, I, those is, are my for me. That is awesome. I mean, just you, you said something that really like the the triumph is actually getting the book out there. Like that's the triumph, and then the challenge, like you said, when you're writing something so personal. You have to stop sometimes, and it's um for for me it was therapeutic, and but it was also like doing shadow work. Like I had to address stuff about myself. I was like, oh my god, it was like reliving it all over again. And yes, you know, parts. You know, I'm like, okay, I need to take a step back, give myself some time, and then you know when I got to the point, I was like, okay, I can do this again. You know what I did. And well, I'm excited. I definitely want to be able to read that. I think we have similar titles. Yours is Broken Trust. Mine was Born Broken. And it's very similar to that. So I'm I definitely would love to have you come back when that book is, is published and, and let's let's talk about it. Cause a lot of these, a lot of I've learned that a lot of writers that do write personal tell their personal stories. It's really therapeutic, but it's a process. Like it's a healing process. And it's not always a, a a easy process. It's a, it's a lot of crying, a lot of, you know, you can write it, you got to go back to that moment and relive those moments can be very, very traumatic. <laughs> got my husband on it because he's like, look, you know, you know, trust is a big part of marriage. Make this marriage work. You have to start trusting me and you're not going to get this out. So he went out and bought the computers and just let me sit down, write, get it out. And that's what got me started in writing. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful to have such support from your husband. It was like, my like I, I understand. My husband's my biggest fan. He, I have books sitting in my computer and I'll say, read this and he'll read it. But it's still sitting in my computer. It hasn't been published yet. So he'll go, when are you going to finish this? And I'm like, I don't know. I won't read mine. That's one of his big things because I'll support you. I will get everything out there, but I'm not going to read them because we have uh, things. He likes the historical and biblical suspense. So yeah. it's not reading. So I'm like, okay with that because he probably wouldn't be honest about it anyway. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, I appreciate I love that. So now you did share that. Now, how do you... This is a good question. I, I don't think I've I've covered this in any of the other uh, interviews I've done, but how do you balance your creative expression with commercial success as an author? Because I know I've gotten responses like, why do you do it? And I've gotten people say, for the money. And then some people say, I'm just a creative person. I want to just put my work out there. Do you have like a balance? Is there one that you prefer over the other? Well, for me, I, like you, it's really, I mean, yes, I would love to see my books out there making millions of dollars or right. hitting the else. But for me, it's about if I can bring that emotion out in somebody and if I can get them to connect with my characters, it's more important for me to see that happen than, than the dollars, you know. Exactly. Um, That's how I feel. I agree. But, so I, I'm more on the creative side than the commercial side at this point in my life. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to let them down. 
calling it in, but, but <laughs> the, the creative side is actually more empowering for me. Absolutely. I totally agree. I told, told my son one time, I, it may not be in this lifetime, but maybe in the future, somebody will pick up my book and they'll make a movie about it. I may not see it, but maybe my grandkids will see it. Or their kids will see it, but it definitely, it's a creative process for me. Now, you did mention that you had your upcoming book coming out and you have a couple of book signings. And I definitely want to make sure I get that information to put it um, on the website. Are there any other genres or styles that you think you're going to explore in the future? Yes, I will definitely determine to write a true crime book. I have not wow. done that. I am, like I said, I'm, I'm all about the mystery suspense thriller. Yeah. And there are so many, I mean, you see all the big true crimes out there, you know, but you don't see the little ones that matter as much yeah. as those at the news. And my goal is to write a crime that's not, you know, national all over the news, but a story that impacted somebody's life, you know, Absolutely. so doing in the future. Well, that's mm. exciting. I love that. Now, I definitely want to, again, you said you have a Facebook page, and I will definitely get that and share that as well. And you have a TikTok page I would love to share. Now, do you have any like final thoughts for me today or any messages that you just want to share with other females? Because you said, you know, on your TikTok, you want to help other authors. Is there any like messages you think that would just, somebody out there right now needs motivation? I know it. Don't give up. I mean, absolutely go for your dreams and your goals. But you can also join um, women's writing groups. I mean, those writing groups have been very helpful. Um, we help with sharing information on how to do this. Like, you know, a lot of what people don't know that Half Price Books, Barnes & Noble's are huge, huge supporters of self-published authors. Wow. You know, that, that information with everybody, you know, I've shared it how to get into the library. And people's like, that's easy to do. Yeah. You just got to pound the pavement. You know, you got to be willing to do it. And so don't give up. I mean, if you want it, when it gets your name out there, get your book out there, when it, no one, you're going to have to put the work in for it. That would be my advice. And, Absolutely. and have fun doing it. Don't make Absolutely. it up. all about the, because if you have fun doing it, then you're really going to enjoy those rewards as they're coming to you. Mm -hmm. absolutely well i think i've learned a couple of things and i definitely want to check out barnes and nobles and i i had been thinking about it for a very long time but i was barnes and nobles has always been such a big organiz you know conglomerate and i was like i don't think i you know i can i can do that but i don't if, if it's a possibility i would love to you know share my books through barnes and nobles as well so you just actually gave me taught me something today that i didn't know so i am excited to explore that a little further Good. Yeah. Because this, I mean, um, you wouldn't think that they would be big supporters of um, self-published authors, but they are and they highly welcome. You just got to go through the process, you know, of, that right. they have. And I've not known anybody that I've recommended to have their book rejected yet, you, you know, because awesome. they're all excited and, you know, got in contact with me. Hey, I got a signing. I'm like, oh, great. You know, but supporting each other and joining them groups. And I mean, they, they're really helpful. They really are because you know, like like you didn't know about the uh, Barnes and Nobles or the Half Price books being big supporters. There's stuff out there that I'm not knowing that I'm learning. You know, through the groups as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I definitely want to join some more groups. I think I only am in the one group that you may have seen this post in, and I was a little nervous because I was like, I got you know, I I got like over 200 people who were interested in doing the podcast, and I wasn't expecting it to be so overwhelming. But then I thought, well this is great. This is going to really help other authors help and support other authors. Like that is the, the true goal of what I want. Like this be supportive of there's so many different genres. So far I've interviewed science fiction, self-help, um, regular fiction. Now I have novella, you have the novella and then you have the, 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 the crime suspense. I mean, the 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 spectrum of authors out there and their talents is just so large so it was really exciting to just have you guys come on and i really uh appreciate you joining me today and um so i'm gonna now before i wrap up did you have any other closing statements that you want to share um just yeah you know, just enjoy your writing have fun with it um and if you like it especially if you're doing a personal book if you're doing and feeling those emotions you know you need to take that step back, get back so that you can go back into it. 
but more than anything, have fun with your writing because I mean, I, everyone I write, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, except for the first one, of course, you know, but I, just, you know, I did laugh at some of the things that I was writing, you know, that reminded me of good times. And so, um, but don't give up on yourself, you know, go for them goals, reach for them because they are reachable. Yeah. It was like, Absolutely. I, I do. Again, I want to thank you, Shelly, so much for taking the time to join me today. And uh, I am looking forward to your upcoming book. So please keep me posted. I hope that we stay in contact moving for, moving forward. And now I'm going to I am going to um, one second here.